Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one I've been the most excited to film because I'll be reviewing my luxury lipstick collection to help you make a decision on your first or next luxury lipstick purchase. Since we are approaching Christmas, this video will also be very insightful to you if you're planning on getting someone a high-end lipstick as a gift but don't know where to start. To start off, I divided my lipsticks into two categories based on their finishes, which are either matte or satin. If you're not familiar with these terms, satin means a slightly glossy finish, and matte means it's not glossy and is generally more pigmented and creamier and is free of shimmer and glitter. Within each category, I'll swatch them in the order from least pigmented to most pigmented. I'll then give them ratings out of 5 based on the quality of their packaging, application, and of course the price. If at any point you want to skip to that product specifically, then feel free to scroll down and click on the timestamp. So the first lipstick in the satin category is the YSL Volupte Sheer Candy series. It's in this beautiful silver hardware component that reminds me a lot like the Sailor Moon characters would use. Although I was not a huge fan of Sailor Moon, it does remind me of my childhood and it just feels so girly and magical. I think this was meant to be a lightweight tinted lip balm that is meant to moisturize the lips but i don't feel too much of that moisturizing effect it doesn't have the cushiony feel that a lot of the good lip balms have in terms of the formula it's not that great but the packaging is definitely five out of five YSL discontinued the line with the silver packaging and they came out with a gold packaging version i don't know if the formula has been upgraded but just looking at the pictures from Sephora, the packaging looks so luxurious, I'm tempted to get another one. But I'm probably going to save my money because I have so many already. Next, we have the Giorgio Armani Ecstasy Shine Lipstick Collection. It is a high shine and extremely hydrating lipstick that doesn't feel tacky and greasy on the lips. I find myself reaching for this lipstick a lot during the winter time. The other benefit to the formula is that it can also go for a low shine almost matte finish by mincing your lips against a sheet of paper to get rid of some of that oil and it will settle down into a slightly semi matte finish. And I've also used this formula on my cheeks as a blush and it blends out really nicely. Last but not least, the best part about this lipstick is the beautiful and sophisticated red lipstick packaging. It has a magnetic closure and when you hold it in your hands, there's a weight to it which makes it very luxurious. I feel so pampered when I pull this out of my purse and having a really good formula to go along with it is definitely a plus. I love this product so much, I got three shades. One is the coral you saw from before, another is this berry looking color, and the third one I actually purchased from my mom, which is a subtle pink, rose pink color. And we have another YSL lipstick. This time it's the more traditional kind of lipstick in terms of the color payoff. The formula is enclosed by this beautiful gold packaging that has a YSL logo in the front. There is a debossed YSL logo on the bullet, which is not very obvious through the camera. The bullet has a sugary mango scent to it, like the first YSL lip tint that we saw. Personally, I don't mind the fragrance, but I think I could do without it. The formula could go from medium to full coverage without feeling heavy and greasy. This lipstick meets my requirement of a good lipstick. How can we talk about high-end lipsticks without mentioning the Pat McGrath ones? And is known for its high-quality packaging as well as its amazing lipstick and eyeshadow formulas. This is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I am not a fan. 
first, although the packaging feels and looks expensive, it is not my type of aesthetics. The main concern I have is with the formula. I dislike whatever moisturizing ingredients they added to the formula because they give off a fake hydrating sensation. When the formula is on my lips, I feel that there is a coat of lubricant on the surface that doesn't penetrate deep down. My lips almost feel suffocated underneath that thin coat of lubricant. And not to mention, it is way too long lasting for me. I have two shades from the Hot Lips 2 collection. One is a nude color called Angel Alessandra and the other is a dusty rose color called In Love with Olivia. I love the shape of the lipstick bullet. It is very different from what you find on the market. The addition of a small debossed lipstick pattern is also a very unique touch. The formula applies on really nicely as it doesn't have a draggy feeling. And at first it applies with the sheer touch. And slowly you can build it up to the level of pigmentation that you want. The formula doesn't feel overly greasy or tacky. It's just the right amount of hydration for all day wear. The packaging though, it's so-so for me. It doesn't feel as premium as the previous few lipsticks. And last but not least, we have a lipstick from NARS from the Audacious Lipstick Collection. I got the shade Juliet, which is a reddish coral shade that is not very suitable for my skin tone, unfortunately. So I haven't really used it that many times. It's in this sleek black component that also has a magnetic closure. The formula, like the description says, it's a very creamy, one-stroke, high-impact lipstick. As you can see in the swatch, just one swatch has more pigment than any of the other lipsticks I've shown you so far. On the lips, it doesn't feel heavy though does have a similar feel as the Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks, but in terms of the pigment level, it's definitely the highest. And over here, I'm just going back to the first color and swatching a few more times on top of the swatch just to show you how it would look with more uh, application. There are two strips for the YSL Volupte lipstick because I accidentally swatched it twice but starting from the uh, orange color that's going to be the Giorgio Armani and so on and so forth. Thanks for watching my video. This is part one of the two-part series I plan on making on my luxury lipstick collection. All of the lipsticks that I just showed you are the satin finished lipsticks and in the next video I will start talking about all of the matte lipsticks in my collection. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please remember to click the subscribe button for more. I love to know your thoughts on your favorite lipsticks or your recent purchases or what you plan on purchasing next. I'll see you in the next video.